Hi, Daddy6 here with Black Fox Knifeworks. Today we're going to be going over some um, frequently asked questions that I get and uh, hopefully we can help uh, help you guys make your purchase of your grinder a bit easier, a bit smoother uh, with this informational video. So the first one is I get a lot of questions on uh, voltages and should I get the 110, 220, you know, what should I do there about that? Um, so what I have to do is tell you, you know, how the machine works and what's going on uh, underneath it. So our VFD has an input and an output. The input can be 115 or 220 plus or minus 15%. Um, so we can go all the way up to like 260 and all the way down to about 210. Um, and the same on the 115 up and down, uh, no problem. So that's the input coming into the machine. And the difference between 110 and 220 is the amp draw. 110 is going to draw more amps because the VFD is converting 110 and trans and putting it into 220 for the motor. So the VFD is always going to send 220 volts to the motor at a 5.5 amp draw. Um, doesn't matter if it's 220 come in or 110. So that is really the main difference between 110 and 220 is that the amp draw over time is going to be less with a 220 because it doesn't have to step the voltage up for the motor. Now if you want to get your own motor and you just wanted us to build up the grinder um, without, uh, without our motor, you found one, that's perfectly fine. Uh, what I will note is that the VFD will only put out 5.5 amps, which means if you're looking to get a full 2 horsepower out of it, your motor draw has to be less than 5.5 amps. Um, most of the premium efficient motors like Baldor or Leeson at a 2 amp uh, value or 2 horsepower value pull about 5.2 to 5.5 amps. So they will work only the premium efficient. So you need to take care to watch the amperage that your motor wants and pair it with the VFD. Do not go off a of horsepower because that can be a bit mis misleading. I've seen horsepower range on a 2 horse from let's say uh, I think 5.25 is the lowest I've seen for premium efficient, all the way up to 10 amps. And so if you were thinking you're going to get your 10 amp motor, put it on with our VFD, it's going to do an overdraw and it's not going to be able to work. Uh, I believe our, um, there are some, some industrial VFDs that will pull, will put out 10 amps. They're much more expensive, much bigger uh, VFDs. So kind of in the same thread, uh, Another question I get is, what's the main difference between the One and the Pro? So the One machine comes with the gas shock. This puts out a constant pressure no matter where it is in the stroke, it's always going to be about 40 pounds. These shocks are interchangeable, so you could put in a 60, 90, I think they even make a 20 pound shock. I like the 40 pound, I think it's perfect for um, grinding on a belt grinder. Puts out the perfect amount of pressure. So what that means is if you move your platen in or out, your your tension on your belt is going to be the same, no matter where, what the position of the platen is. As compared to like a spring system, um, as springs compress or extend, they change their value, force value. Um, a gas shock does not. Um, so the main, the main uh, difference between the One and the Pro is the electric tensioning on the Pro. The electric tensioning puts in an electric actuator, an industrial grade electric actuator, and it has a spring housing attached to it. As the electric actuator extends, it compresses the spring housing, and on the housing there's little indications of how much force you're putting out. So you can be repeatable, or you can you know, just vary the tension on the fly with a flick of a switch. It's really easy to go up or down while the grinder is running without having any issues. Another main uh, difference is the industrial LED light. This is an industrial LED light that puts out a lot of lumens right down onto your work surface. We've got it integrated with custom brackets going down into a gooseneck, all the way back into the back of the grinder with a switch here for the light. Um, and then under the hood is where you'll see the most amount of changes. So right here I have our base plate and our VFD setup. So usually we would just provide the VFD, wire in the power to the switch and the motor coming in to the VFD directly. With the Pro or if you get the light upgrade, 
with the Black Fox 1, we add industrial terminal blocks as well as an industrial um, uh, 12 volt um, power supply. This will convert the power for the light and the electric actuator. So if you just get the light now, you want the electric actuator later, it's fairly easy. You bring in your switch for your actuator into the power supply and then from the power supply or from the switch you'll have two extra things that go out to your electric actuator so you can reverse the polarity of your power. Um, this also supplies the power to the light. Um, these VFDs are very, or sorry, these uh, these uh, power units are very expensive, almost expensive as a VFD if you get the right one. They're very high quality um, parts and a lot of the routing is done into a terminal block which is standard for industrial grade equipment and it keeps the routing nice and clean. This one has not been cleaned up uh, because it still has wires to go but we'll usually zip tie the wires into nice bundles uh, for this as well. It takes quite a bit more time to do but I think the outcome is well worth it. Uh, that's it for some frequently asked questions.